Next, we want to pivot to our nation's attempt to tame the spread of monkeypox, which has now been reported in at least two children. So to better understand how to fight this virus, we're joined now by Dr. Peter Hotez. He's the co-director of the Center for Vaccine Development at Texas Children's Hospital. He's also the dean of the National School of Tropical Medicine at Baylor College of Medicine. Dr. Hotez, thank you for being with us. I want to start with the basics here. This has been covered, but just based on the way I'm seeing people react to this, I think it might be smart to just set the basics. Who can get monkeypox and how easily does it spread? Well, there, there is real concern because the number of cases is accelerating at a pretty, um, pretty um, uh, accelerated clip. Um, we're now up to 6,000 cases uh, in the United States, uh, 25,000 cases globally. So the U.S. accounts for about a quarter of the world's cases. And what concerns me is the trajectory, um, the the way the cases are going up so quickly. We know that 6,000 is certainly an underestimate. I can't tell you if it's by a factor of two or three or more. But those, those cases are continuing to rise, especially in some of our bur big urban areas like San Francisco, uh, like New York, and even here, even here in Houston. And the problem is this. We don't have the full armamentarium of tools to control it. So we lack the sufficient number of doses of vaccines, even though we think the vaccines are going to work very well. We lack sufficient doses of the antiviral drug, Tecoverimat, also known as TPOX, which we think could even be used in a form of post-exposure prophylaxis. So we're in a race trying to, that's the big picture, the race trying to accelerate the control tools that we have, the diagnostics, the drugs and vaccines versus that steep trajectory of cases. Um, it's it it is transmissible for those who have intimate contact. So uh, this is uh, spread by respiratory droplet contact, similar to influenza, but also more intimate than that, skin to skin or oral to skin. And it so happens that it got into the gain by sexual um, social networks initially, and that's why it's spreading there first. But there's an additional concern that if the numbers continue to rise, it'll become more generalized across the human population in the U.S. and even uh, get into the animal population. And it's not only the U.S., it's the entire Western Hemisphere, because a lot of cases are in Portugal and, and, and Spain right now and now extending into Latin America, especially Brazil. So that's the big picture. Um, not dire yet, but the feeling is unless we work pretty quickly, we could get there. You mentioned that we do have vaccines that are available. We just don't have enough of them. Walk us through that vaccination process. Like, who, what are the requirements for it? And also, how much are we going to need? So there's there's the older vaccine, which was a live replicating virus vaccine, and we have lots of that. The problem is it's thought to be um, too many side effects to warrant giving it now in this con current monkeypox outbreak. So we have a newer vaccine that the BARDA, the Biomedical Advanced Research Development Authority of the U.S., commission more than uh, 10 years ago. They spent a lot of money on it. They had the doses, but then they let them expire uh, inexplicably and tragically and didn't replenish them. So when monkeypox actually, uh, when, when the outbreak began, we only had a few thousand doses and we've been playing catch up ever since. So it's a matter of having, um, we're, we're getting now about 100,000 new doses and soon we hope to be up to around 1.8, 1.9 million, maybe by the end of the year, maybe more than that. But it's still insufficient. It's a two-dose vaccine. It's a good vaccine. It's a safe vaccine. It was approved on the basis of what's called immunobridging studies. I have confidence in the vaccine, provided we can get enough of it. So the, since we can't right now, the other question is the antiviral drug, Tecoverimat. Could we give that, and since we could scale that up perhaps easier, uh, as a form of post-exposure prophylaxis as an interim way until um, the number of uh, vaccines arrive? So the president has just appointed a, a new uh, monkeypox czar, a new coordinator, and a deputy coordinator. They look well qualified to me. I don't know them personally, but these are going to be the thorny questions that they're going to have to address and, and, and hit the ground running in terms of starting their job. And of course, it's important everyone is aware of it, regardless of whatever prejudicial stigmas or stereotypes you might hear. Dr. Peter Hotez, we thank you for your time tonight. Thanks so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.